And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Thursday's broadcast of The Gospel Truth. Today, I'm continuing to teach on the subject of You've Already Got It. This is nearly the end of my fourth week of teaching. I've got a book on this, CDs, DVDs, study guides, all kinds of things, and I've still got quite a ways to go. I've got some amazing things still to share out of this teaching, but this is revolutionary. If you've missed any of this teaching, please get our product. We'll be offering that at the end of the program. But I promise you, this is not the way that most Christians think, and this is precisely the reason that most Christians are not experiencing the abundant abundant life with all of the blessings and provisions that God's provided for us. It's because they they think that God is responding to them. The truth is God anticipated every need we could ever have, and He's already given you everything that you need. If you're asking for healing, you've already got it. If you're asking for prosperity, you've already got it. You're already blessed. But He didn't give you money directly. He gives you an anointing. You have to go out and put your hand unto something. If you're asking for joy and peace and all of these things, Galatians 5, 22 and 23, you've already got it. And so I've been teaching on this now, like I said, for nearly four weeks. One of the things that causes people to struggle receiving this and applying it in their life is because they are thinking that all there is to reality is just the physical world. And so they ask, say, for instance, for healing. And they say, oh, Father, heal me. And then they check their body or they go to the doctor. And if there isn't physical evidence that they're healed, they think God has done nothing. And I'm showing that that is not true. There is God is a spirit, John 4, 24. God moves in the spirit realm. God releases his power in the spirit. And whether you ever see it change the physical reality is not an indication of what God has done. It's an indication that did he have some person to flow through. We are conduits that allow what God is doing in the spiritual world to come into this physical world. And I've given examples of where God moved and gave the answer to prayer to Daniel. And yet in one instance, Daniel chapter 9, it took three minutes for his answer to manifest. In Daniel chapter 10, it took three weeks. And people just say, well, why did God answer one in three minutes and the other one in three weeks? He didn't. He answered both instantly, but in the ninth chapter, Daniel's uh, answer to prayer, the messenger Gabriel got through with zero hindrance, zero resistance from the devil. In the 10th chapter, the devil actually assigned a prince of Persia, a demonic power that hindered the messenger that was coming to answer Daniel's prayers for 21 days. Now, we have the benefit of seeing in Scripture what was going on behind the scenes, but from Daniel's perspective, you know, it just looking at things from his way, one prayer was answered in three minutes. The other prayer was answered in three weeks. But the truth is God moved instantly. God released his answer in both cases the same. He was faithful. It was the devil that made the difference. It was the devil that was the variable. And so yesterday I was making a real point that we as New Testament believers have something that Daniel didn't have. We have authority over the devil. We can resist the devil, James 4, 7, and he will flee from us. We can cast out devils. It says in Matthew chapter 10, Luke chapter 9, that he gave us power and authority over all of the effects of the devil, over spirits to cast them out. So as New Testament believers, when we don't see a quick answer to our prayer, we can get in and shorten the manifestation period of time by taking our authority and rebuking the devil. Now, there are some limitations to this. For instance, if, if you're talking about money, I mentioned some of these things earlier, but I just want to establish this again, that if you're talking about money, God doesn't have money in heaven. He has gold, He has precious stones, He has all of those kind of things, but He uses it for pavement. Our streets are paved with transparent gold and things like this. God doesn't use currency, money, yeah, taking something and giving it in exchange for goods is a human 
uh, institution. When Jesus was here on this earth, he abide, he uh, lived under that institution. When it came time to pay taxes, he told Peter to go catch a fish and take the coin out of his mouth and pay the taxes. And so he used money. I'm not saying that money is demonic or bad, but it's not a heavenly thing. So if you're asking for money, God is not going to give you money. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is He that gives you power to get wealth, that He may establish His covenant as He swore unto your fathers as it is this day. God doesn't give you money. God gives you an anointing, power to get money. And so if you're just praying and saying, Oh God, give me money. God supply my need. And you're doing nothing, then you are allowing Satan to fight against that answer to prayer. It is true that God loves you and that God wants to prosper you, but He doesn't give you money. He's given you an anointing and He said in Deuteronomy chapter 28, whatsoever you set your hand unto will be blessed. If you set your hand to nothing, a hundred times zero is zero. And you are going to see a hindrance to your financial needs being met if you aren't working. There are some people that are on welfare. And I hadn't got time to explain everything completely. I'm not, a, I'm not against people that are on welfare, but I am saying it's not a godly system. Getting money for doing nothing is an ungodly system. That's not the way that God operates. But there are some people who are on welfare and they wouldn't dare go take a job at McDonald's flipping burgers or go to Walmart and be a greeter or something like that because they can make more money on welfare than they could out working a job. But the difference is, if you set your hand unto something, if you become a greeter at Walmart, a, a burger flipper at McDonald's or one of these other things, or if you go out and do anything, God can bless what you set your hand unto. He can multiply it and there's room for increase. But God is not going to bless welfare to you. You are limited. You may get a cost of living raise or something, but welfare is never going to make you wealthy. You are limiting God. You are giving Satan an opportunity against you if you're living off of welfare. Anybody could use welfare for a brief period of time. You could be in a crisis situation. I'm not against you. I'm not saying it's of the devil. I'm just saying it's not a godly system getting something for nothing. Over in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, I believe it's verse 10, says, if you don't work, don't eat. That's what Paul said. That's a God system. You know, I've had people that were on the street and they, they came and asked for a handout and I tell them, you go work for us. You work in production. You, you, you work and do things and at the end of the day, I'll buy you a meal. I'll put you up in a hotel and stuff like that. And did you know probably 50% or more of the people that need help like that, they aren't willing to work for it. They just want a handout. That's an ungodly system. Anybody could use welfare for a brief period of time, but to live off of it and make this the way that you get your income, it is not God's system. God is going to bless what you set your hand unto. And if you aren't setting your hand unto something, then you are allowing Satan to hinder God's supply because God doesn't give you money. He gives you an anointing that once you set your hand unto something, He'll begin to bless it. You know, if I was in a situation where I was destitute, I can guarantee you rather than receiving welfare, and I can say this because I was destitute when Jamie and I first got married by my own uh, wrong theology, thinking it was sin for a minister to work. And because of my wrong thinking, we, we struggled and we would go weeks at a time without food. But it, in that situation, I never got welfare. I never took food stamps. I, I was qualified for all of those things, but I never took them. So I'm not just saying this off the top of my head. I'm saying that I refused to sit there and just get something for nothing. I started believing God and I started setting my hand unto things and God has blessed me and prospered me. But if I was in a situation where I needed finances, I wouldn't settle for welfare. I'd go work at McDonald's even if it was a decrease in pay because then God could bless it. And I can promise you that because I believe God, it wouldn't be long. I would be the best worker they ever had. I can guarantee you I would be promoted. I would become a manager. I could become an owner. And if you own a McDonald's and own multiple McDonald's, man, you could be very wealthy at that. See, there's room for advancement. There's room for blessing and prosperity, but doing nothing, a hundred times zero is zero. That's a hindrance. 
SO I'M SAYING THROUGH ALL OF THIS THAT GOD DOESN'T JUST SUPPLY YOUR NEED OUT OF THE AIR. WHEN YOU ARE BELIEVING FOR FINANCES, FINANCES IS A HUMAN INSTITUTION. PEOPLE ARE INVOLVED IN IT. AND PEOPLE ARE GOING TO BE USED BY GOD. GOD IS NOT GOING TO PUT MONEY IN YOUR POCKET MIRACULOUSLY. IT'S GOING TO COME THROUGH PEOPLE. LUKE CHAPTER 6, VERSE 38 SAYS, GIVE, AND IT SHALL BE GIVEN UNTO YOU GOOD MEASURE, PRESSED DOWN, SHAKEN TOGETHER, AND RUNNING OVER SHALL MEN GIVE INTO YOUR BOSOM. IT SAYS MEN WILL GIVE INTO YOUR BOSOM. GOD USES PEOPLE. YOU KNOW, I HAD AN INSTANCE WHERE THIS IS BACK DURING THOSE DAYS WHEN I FIRST GOT STARTED, AND I THOUGHT IT WAS SIN FOR A MINISTER TO WORK. AND uh, SO ANYWAY, I WAS ALLOWING SATAN TO HINDER OUR FINANCES BECAUSE I WASN'T COOPERATING FULLY WITH GOD. NOW I WAS WORKING AND I WAS PASTORING A CHURCH, BUT IT WAS JUST A SMALL NUMBER OF PEOPLE AND STUFF. SO ANYWAY, WE HAD RENT COME DUE. I TOLD MY LANDLADY THAT I WILL PAY HER. I DIDN'T AVOID HER. I WENT TO HER THE DAY THAT THE RENT WAS DUE, AND I SAID, I DON'T HAVE IT, BUT I PROMISE YOU I WILL GET IT. AND uh, ANYWAY, AFTER THREE WEEKS, I HADN'T SEEN THAT FINANCE COME IN, AND THE LANDLADY CAME TO ME, AND BOY, SHE RAILED ON ME AND SAID, SOME CHRISTIAN YOU ARE. YOU'RE JUST, YOU KNOW, YOU WON'T PAY YOUR DEBTS. AND MAN, IT HURT ME THAT I WAS ALLOWING THE DEVIL TO USE ME TO TURN SOMEBODY AGAINST THE LORD. AND ANYWAY, IT WAS A DESPERATE SITUATION. I PRAYED IN LONG STORY, BUT I HAD A WOMAN WHO I HAD MINISTERED TO, AND I HAD SPOKEN INTO HER LIFE, AND I'D BEEN A... a, a CHANNEL OF GOD'S BLESSING TO HER. SHE WAS COMING THROUGH TOWN, AND SHE WANTED TO TAKE MY WIFE AND ME OUT TO EAT. AND SO, MAN, THIS WAS GREAT. WE HADN'T EATEN IN DAYS. AND SO WE WENT OUT. WE ATE A GREAT MEAL. SHE PAID FOR IT. AND THEN SHE HANDED ME A CHECK. I WAS BELIEVING GOD FOR $120. WE HAD $100 WORTH OF RENT, AND I WAS BELIEVING FOR $120 SO I COULD GIVE $20 OFF OF IT AS A GIFT. AND SO SHE HANDED ME A CHECK FOR $120, THE EXACT AMOUNT THAT I WAS BELIEVING FOR. BUT WHEN SHE DID IT, MY FIRST THOUGHT WAS, I MEAN, I APPRECIATED IT, BUT MY FIRST THOUGHT WAS, GOD, WE'RE THREE AND A HALF WEEKS LATE. WHY DID THIS COME NOW? AND I DIDN'T SAY THAT. I WAS JUST THINKING IT. AND SHE WENT ON TO SAY, SHE SAYS, FOUR WEEKS AGO, GOD TOLD ME TO GIVE YOU THIS MONEY. BUT SHE SAYS, I HAVE NEVER GIVEN MY TITHE OR ANY MONEY TO ANYWHERE EXCEPT MY CHURCH. I'VE NEVER GIVEN TO AN INDIVIDUAL. AND SHE SAID, I JUST WASN'T SURE IT WAS GOD, AND I'VE BEEN PRAYING ABOUT IT, AND IT TOOK ME FOUR WEEKS TO RESPOND. AND WHEN SHE SAID THAT, I THOUGHT, GOD, YOU WERE FAITHFUL. YOU SPOKE TO PEOPLE THAT I HAD MINISTERED TO, AND YOU WERE SUPPLYING MY NEED, BUT HE USED PEOPLE. AND BECAUSE OF PEOPLE AND THEIR FEARS AND THEIR DOUBTS AND THEIR uh, NOT BEING FAMILIAR WITH THIS, SATAN WAS ABLE TO HINDER MY SUPPLY THROUGH ANOTHER PERSON. AND SO WHEN I SAW THAT, THE NEXT TIME MY RENT CAME DUE AND I DIDN'T HAVE IT, IT WAS ONLY THREE DAYS LATE. I WENT AND TALKED TO THE LANDLORD, AND I TOLD HIM, I SAID, I WILL PAY THIS. AND ONLY THREE DAYS INTO IT, I DECIDED THAT, GOD, YOU'VE SPOKEN TO SOMEBODY JUST LIKE YOU DID THIS LADY BEFORE, AND I KNOW THAT YOU HAVE SUPPLIED MY NEED, BUT I DON'T NEED IT IN JUST THE SPIRITUAL REALM. I NEED IT IN THE PHYSICAL REALM. AND SO I BEGAN TO TAKE MY AUTHORITY, AND SINCE I DIDN'T KNOW WHO GOD WAS SPEAKING TO, HOW IT WAS COMING TO PASS, I JUST BEGAN TO PRAY IN TONGUES. THAT'S WHAT THE BIBLE SAYS, THAT YOU DON'T KNOW HOW TO PRAISE YOU ALL, THAT YOU'RE PRAYING THE HIDDEN WISDOM OF GOD WHEN YOU PRAY IN TONGUES. IT'S YOUR SPIRIT PRAYING, THE PART OF YOU THAT HAS THE MIND OF CHRIST. AND SO I BEGAN TO PRAY IN TONGUES, AND I REMEMBER I WAS OVER AT MY MOTHER'S HOUSE, AND I WAS PAINTING HER BAY WINDOW, AND I WAS PRAYING IN TONGUES AND COMMANDING HOWEVER SATAN WAS HINDERING MY FINANCES TO BE REMOVED AND GET OUT OF THE WAY. AND WHILE I WAS PRAYING AND PAINTING THAT WINDOW, THE PHONE RANG. I ANSWERED IT. IT WAS MY MOTHER, AND SHE WAS A SCHOOL TEACHER, AND SHE SAW ONE OF MY OLD TEACHERS FROM BACK WHEN I WAS IN HIGH SCHOOL, SOMEBODY THAT WAS A BELIEVER AND SOMEBODY THAT I HAD A SPIRITUAL RELATIONSHIP WITH. AND uh, SHE HAD SEEN THAT WOMAN. THAT DAY, THAT LADY GOT TO ASKING ABOUT WHAT I WAS DOING, AND MY MOTHER SAID, WELL, he, she, HE'S AT MY HOUSE TODAY PAINTING MY HOUSE. AND SHE SAYS, OH, COULD YOU PLEASE HAVE HIM COME OUT? I WANT TO TAKE HIM OUT TO EAT. AND SO ANYWAY, MY MOTHER CALLED ME, TOLD ME ABOUT IT. MY WIFE AND I WENT OVER. WE ATE WITH HER, AND AS WE WERE EATING, SHE GAVE ME A CHECK FOR 300 
AND SOMETHING DOLLARS AND SAID THAT THE LORD HAD SPOKEN TO HER MONTHS AGO TO DO THIS, BUT SHE DIDN'T KNOW WHERE I WAS. I DIDN'T LIVE IN THAT TOWN ANYMORE. I JUST HAPPENED TO BE IN TOWN VISITING MY MOTHER. AND ANYWAY, EVERYTHING CAME TOGETHER. BUT IT HAPPENED THE VERY TIME THAT I WAS REBUKING AND WHATEVER THESE HINDRANCES WERE THAT WERE STOPPING THE FLOW OF FINANCES, I COMMANDED THEM TO GET OUT OF THE WAY. AND AT THAT EXACT MOMENT IS WHEN THE NEED CAME THROUGH. AND SEE, WHEN YOU'RE DEALING WITH MONEY, GOD IS GOING TO USE PEOPLE. GOD DOESN'T JUST SUPERNATURALLY GIVE YOU FINANCES. HE'S GOING TO FLOW THROUGH PEOPLE. MEN WILL GIVE INTO YOUR BOSOM, LUKE 6, 38. AND SO EVEN THOUGH YOU MIGHT BE IN FAITH AND EVEN THOUGH YOU AREN'T WAVERING IN YOUR FAITH, ANOTHER PERSON IS INVOLVED IN THIS SUPPLY AND SOMETIMES YOUR FINANCES CAN BE HINDERED NOT BECAUSE OF WHAT YOU'RE DOING BUT BECAUSE OF OTHER PEOPLE. YOU KNOW, I REMEMBER WHEN JIMMY SWAGGART AND JIM BAKER, THEY BOTH, YOU KNOW, HAD THEIR SCANDALS COME IN THE SAME YEAR, I THINK JUST A FEW MONTHS APART. AND ANYWAY, WHEN THIS BROKE, THIS, I FORGET THE EXACT DATE ON THIS, BUT THIS IS BEFORE I WAS ON TELEVISION. IT WAS WHEN I ONLY HAD A RADIO MINISTRY. AND I FORGET EXACTLY WHAT OUR INCOME WAS AT THAT TIME. BUT WHEN THESE SCANDALS BROKE ON JIMMY SWAGGART AND JIM BAKER, MY INCOME WENT DOWN 40%. AND THAT HAD NOTHING TO DO WITH ME. I DIDN'T HAVE A SCANDAL. I DIDN'T DO SOMETHING. BUT YOU KNOW WHAT? GOD USES PEOPLE. AND and PEOPLE WERE, IN A SENSE, NAIVE AT THAT TIME. THERE WASN'T AS MUCH CHRISTIAN TELEVISION AND THINGS, AND SO IT WASN'T AS PROMINENT. AND THERE HADN'T BEEN AS MANY SCANDALS. AND PEOPLE MIGHT HAVE BEEN GIVING MORE GRACE AND MERCY TOWARDS MEDIA MINISTRIES BACK THEN. BUT WHEN JIMMY SWAGGART AND JIM BAKER CAME OUT AND THEY WERE EXPOSED IMMEDIATELY. PEOPLE'S CONFIDENCE AND FAITH IN MEDIA MINISTERS WAS SHAKEN AND THEY QUIT GIVING. AND MY INCOME TANKED. IT WENT DOWN 40% NOT BECAUSE OF WHAT I'D DONE BUT BECAUSE OF WHAT OTHER PEOPLE HAD DONE AND THE WAY IT, it, it HAD AFFECTED PEOPLE. THEY LOST THEIR CONFIDENCE IN MEDIA MINISTRIES. AND SO, SEE, IF I DIDN'T UNDERSTAND THAT GOD USES PEOPLE AND THAT IT'S NOT JUST LIKE HE'S GOING TO GIVE ME MONEY DIRECTLY INTO MY WALLET. HE'S NOT GOING TO COUNTERFEIT IT AND PUT IT IN MY WALLET. HE USES PEOPLE. IF I DIDN'T UNDERSTAND THAT, I COULD HAVE GOT TO THINKING, OH, GOD, WHAT ARE YOU DOING? WHY ARE YOU... WHY HAVE YOU DECREASED MY INCOME 40%? DID YOU KNOW, EVEN THOUGH MY INCOME DECREASED 40%, MY BILLS DIDN'T DECREASE ONE BIT. AND IT PUT US INTO A FINANCIAL BIND. AND SOME PEOPLE WOULD JUST IMMEDIATELY THINK, WHAT HAVE I DONE WRONG? IT MAY NOT HAVE ANYTHING TO DO WITH YOU. GOD USES PEOPLE. YOU KNOW, AGAIN, WHEN THE RECESSION HIT, the WHAT PEOPLE CALL THE GREAT RECESSION IN 2008, THE LATTER PART OF 2008 AND 2009, CHRISTIANS, I SAW A BARNA SURVEY ON THIS, AND ONE OF THE WAYS THAT CHRISTIANS COPED WITH THE DECREASE IN INCOME AND THINGS LIKE THIS WAS THAT THEY QUIT THEIR GIVING, WHICH IS THE WORST THING YOU CAN DO. IF YOU'RE IN A FINANCIAL BIND, MAN, THE WORST THING YOU CAN DO IS QUIT GIVING. THAT IS THE WRONG REACTION. BUT NONETHELESS, THERE IS st uh, STATISTICAL INFORMATION THAT SHOWS CHRISTIANS QUIT GIVING AS MUCH MONEY. AND SO WHEN THAT RECESSION HIT, DID YOU KNOW IT AFFECTED US? NOT BECAUSE OF ANYTHING I DID, BUT BECAUSE OF WHAT WAS GOING ON IN PEOPLE, THE FEAR, THE THINGS THAT WERE BEING SPOKEN. AND THIS WAS BACK IN LATER PART OF 2008. AND BY THAT TIME, I HAD LEARNED THESE EXACT PRINCIPLES THAT I WAS TALKING ABOUT, AND I DIDN'T TAKE IT PERSONALLY. I DIDN'T TAKE IT THAT, GOD, WHY HAVE YOU DECREASED OUR GIVING? I, I JUST TOOK IT AS I KNOW EXACTLY WHAT'S HAPPENING. GOD SUPPLIES MY NEEDS THROUGH PEOPLE. MEN GIVE INTO MY BOSOM. AND THERE ARE THINGS THAT ARE HAPPENING THAT ARE SHAKING PEOPLE, CAUSING THEM TO OPERATE IN FEAR AND CAUSING THEM TO QUIT THEIR GIVING. AND SO I JUST TOOK MY AUTHORITY AND I SPOKE AND I BEGIN TO SAY THAT, FATHER, I KNOW THAT THERE'S SOME PEOPLE THAT ARE PROBABLY OPERATING IN FEAR AND NOT GIVING, BUT THERE'S OTHERS THAT ARE MATURE ENOUGH THAT THEY'RE GOING TO KEEP GIVING. I JUST BELIEVE THAT IF YOU HAVE TO GO TO NEW PEOPLE OR WHATEVER, I SPEAK THAT MEN ARE STILL GIVING INTO MY BOSOM. AND IT WAS AT THAT EXACT TIME IN THE FIRST PART OF 2009 THAT THE LORD SPOKE TO ME ABOUT HOW I NEEDED TO INCREASE OUR BIBLE COLLEGE AND MOVE FROM A SPOT WHERE WE COULD ONLY ACCOMMODATE ABOUT 500 PEOPLE MAXIMUM. AND I MEAN, THAT WAS VERY INCONVENIENT THE WAY WE WERE DOING IT. AND HE TOLD ME THAT WE NEEDED TO OPEN UP AND START BUILDING THIS BIBLE COLLEGE. 
And so that was in 2009. And it took me three years to get all of the permits and everything. But we started in 2012 building buildings. And in seven years, I built $75 million worth of buildings debt free. And uh, the building that I'm in right now, we've got it on a lease purchase thing, but there is zero debt. There's zero interest involved in it and stuff. And anyway, altogether, we have $120 million worth of buildings that came since the Great Recession. And God told me to start expanding, and we nearly doubled in finances during a time that all other ministries, or nearly all other ministries that I'm aware of, they decreased because of people. God supplies our needs through people. And see, I've learned this, and I have to apply it to myself and to my ministry that God uses people. Now, I don't just go and beg people for money, but I do recognize I believe God, but then God is going to speak to people, and so I'll listen, and when God tells me, I'll send out a letter. I'll let people know what's going on and how that we need people to help us, and God uses people. So this, these are some of the things that you have to understand. God is supplying my need. He's supplying your need, but He's going to do it through people. It's not going to fall out of the sky. And if you are ignorant of this and you don't understand that God is a spirit, He moves in the spirit realm, and whether it ever comes into the physical as a reality depends on whether there's somebody that by faith can reach over there and appropriate what is already real in the spiritual world. And so because I've understood this, see, now I do that. If you don't understand that, you will pray and you'll ask for your needs to be met and if you don't see it, well, then you'll just say, God, why didn't you answer my prayer? God, do you love me? And you'll begin to get into doubt, and Satan will just eat your lunch and pop the bag. You need to recognize that God is for you. God has already commanded a blessing upon you. God has given you power to get wealth. Not wealth directly, but power to get wealth. God wants to prosper you. Part of the atonement of the Lord Jesus, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, it says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though He was rich, yet for your sake He became poor, that you through His poverty might be made rich. That is part of your atonement. Jesus died to make you rich. I know that's offensive to a lot of people, but it's Scripture. He became poor so that you might be rich. And some people say, well, that's not talking about money. That's rich in emotions, rich in, in love and relationships. If you read it in context, every verse of 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and chapter 9 is talking about money. For you to say it's not talking about money and it's talking about emotional, mental things is taking it out of context. If you take a text away from the context, all you have left is a con. And it's wrong for people to say that Jesus did not provide for your financial benefit. But He doesn't give that money to you directly. He's just given you an anointing, and you have to understand that God has answered your prayer, but you need to cooperate and do things to bring it from the spiritual realm into the physical realm. I've got all of this teaching in a book entitled, You've Already Got It, and I encourage you to get it. This will really bless you. I've got it in CDs. I've got it in DVDs. I've got study guides, and we have English and Spanish books and study guides. I promise you, this would change your life. Listen to our announcer as he gives you all of this information. Please call or write and get the materials, and join me again tomorrow as I continue the gospel truth.